Dear friend, in this video, we are going to discuss about another very important derivation of simple carburetor by taking or considering the effect of compressibility of air. In the last video, we already discussed about one very important derivation of a simple carburetor by neglecting the effect of compressibility of air. That derivation is also called as approximate analysis method of carburetor. So, in this video, we are going to discuss about another very important derivation of simple carburetor by taking or considering the effect of compressibility of air. This derivation is also called as the exact analysis method of a carburetor. So, to discuss thoroughly, we will move to proceed with the help of a notes part. So, expression for the exact analysis of air fuel ratio supplied by a simple carburetor with taking the effect of compressibility of air. So, in the last video, as we discussed the derivation part or expression part that was for approximate analysis method or we can say that is by neglecting the effect of compressibility of air. Now in this derivation we are going to discuss the exact analysis method of carburetor or we can say by taking the effect of compressibility of air. Okay. So in this uh, particular derivation also there is a need to draw that particular diagram which we already discussed in the last derivation. So, the diagram of simple carburetor again we will see that particular diagram the same diagram you have to draw in this derivation. So, the section 1 1 is a uh, initial section or the entrance section through which the amount of atmospheric air can insert inside the carburetor body. So, this is the venturi here is the choke wall here is that particular nozzle jet and this is the float chamber where the float chamber is connected to the tip of jet of the nozzle with the help of this particular tube. So, the another side is again the air fuel mixture to the engine cylinder through the throat wall. So, this is the basic construction of simple carburetor same diagram we required in this particular uh, second derivation of exact analysis method of carburetor. So, as we already considered section 1 1 is the initial or entry section of the air and section 2 2 is the throat section and this throat section or we can say the jet of the nozzle which is z meter above than the uh, liquid surface inside the float chamber we can say. So, there is always the distance of z or h whatever uh, we consider over here uh, that should be the gap between the jet of the nozzle as well as the surface of the level of the liquid inside the floor chamber. So, this is a essential thing. So, as we know this one, one section is again nothing but for the air and section 2 2 we can consider for the air as well as for the fuel. So, as we already calculated the mass of air and mass of fuel by neglecting the effect of compressibility of air in the earlier derivation. But now in this derivation, we are going to discuss uh, the part or this particular expression by considering the effect of compressibility of air. So, means what at section 1 1 as air enters from this side, once it will come in the throat section, it will get compressed. So, what kind of a effect will happen on the expression of the carburetor now we are going to discuss. So, please consider this particular diagram you have to draw while solving or while writing the derivation part of uh, this uh, exact analysis method. Okay. So, similarly now we start to see the derivation part. That diagram is also part of this uh, particular derivation. So, if we take the compressibility of air into account, the air flow will change but fuel flow will remain same. So, this statement is again very important. So, section 1 1 uh, as in that particular diagram through which the amount of air enters and at section 2 2 at throat section the air will get compressed. So, in this uh, compressibility of air into the account in this uh, derivation we are going to consider compressibility of air means in this derivation there should always change in the 
air equation so the air flow will change but the flow of fuel will remain the same means what so the meaning of this thing is what as air enters from this side or from this entry section as it comes inside the venturi it will get compressed so there should always changes in the equation for the air but there is no any change of the equation for the fuel so means in this equation we have to calculate the equations for the air there is no need to calculate again the equations of the fuel because we already calculated the equation of fuel in the first derivation okay because compressibility of air i have to consider only for the air so there is no question of compressibility of fuel as the pressure difference uh, exerts over here and because of pressure difference uh, the fuel will flow from high pressure to low pressure so we already calculated the equation for the fuel so in this case or in this derivation we have to calculate because the compressibility affect the equation for the air not on the fuel that's why this statement is again very important and that statement is what we are going to calculate the expression for the air and not for the fuel that equation for the fuel flow will remain same there is no need to calculate it once again so this statement is again very important statement so now in this derivation part earlier derivation we have used that bernoulli's theorem equation now in this equation we are going to apply the steady flow energy equation to section 11 and section 22 okay now uh, here we know that particular diagram so we are going to apply steady flow energy equation that is s f e e equation uh, i think all of you are knowing about steady flow energy equation i am repeating once again for section 11 and section 22 so what is that sfe equation that is steady flow energy equation heat minus work q is nothing but heat and work is nothing but w so heat minus work is equal to delta ke plus delta p plus delta h so what do you mean by delta ke delta ke is nothing but change in kinetic energy plus delta p is nothing but change in potential energy and delta h is nothing but change in the enthalpy so this is the standard equation of steady flow energy equation so in this case how we can get the value of kinetic energy so we can write the kinetic energy the equation of kinetic energy in this case change in kinetic energy is nothing but mv square by 2 minus mv square by 2 so one half mv square mass into velocity okay so kinetic energy equation is what one half mv square now in this case for section 2 uh, there is some velocity and section 1 there is some velocity of air so with the help of this we can calculate for section 1 1 and for section 2 2 the change in kinetic energy highest velocity at uh, the throat section of the venturi and the initial velocity at that particular v1 so let us consider the change in kinetic energy is nothing but mv2 square minus mv1 square and change in enthalpy is again h2 minus h1 this h2 for enthalpy at the throat section and h1 is initial enthalpy of that particular air so we can write and change in potential energy so in this case there is no question of potential energy because uh, air enters and uh, that will get compressed so potential energy uh, is uh, not a part of this particular equation so directly we can neglect uh, the equation for potential energy in this case so again as we considered velocity is nothing but uh, letter as we have already considered c1 for uh, initial velocity and c2 for the velocity at the throat section so just replace that uh, values and we can rewrite the equation q minus work uh, heat minus work that is q minus w is equal to this mv2 square by 2 minus mv square by 2 that is nothing but change in kinetic energy we can write like, like this this two base is common so we can write again uh, c2 square minus c1 square by 2 instead of v here uh, we have considered letter c for the velocity so we can write c2 square minus c1 square by 2 and h2 minus h1 plus h2 minus h1 that is change in enthalpy and uh, m that is the unit mass uh, which we are considering that is equal to 1 that's why the value of unit mass m is equal to 1 so we can write directly c2 square minus c1 square by 2 plus h2 minus h1 
hope you understood uh, this term how uh, we are going to write this particular equation so similarly as we discussed uh, h1 and h2 are the enthalpy that section 11 and section 22 respectively whereas c1 and c2 are the velocities so as we already considered these things so we have written that uh, things even uh, here assuming the flow is adiabatic so this is uh, assumption is very necessary and important to solve the further uh, derivation part we are assuming the flow of the air is adiabatic flow and for the adiabatic flow we know there is we have to consider heat is equal to zero that is q is equal to zero work value is equal to zero w is equal to zero and the initial velocity c1 is equal to zero so these are the assumptions made through the adiabatic equation or adiabatic standard so according to the adiabatic standard here uh, you required the knowledge of thermodynamics so through that we can write heat is equal to zero work is equal to zero and the initial velocity of the air is equal to zero in this case so put these values uh, in this equation so q is uh, nothing but zero as per this consideration work is again zero and c1 is again zero so what is remaining the c2 square by 2 as it is plus this h2 minus h1 and this all equation is equate to zero so again simplify the equation so we can write the final equation over here this c2 is equal to uh, here is the square so we can write the under root to the at the right side of uh, equal to sign uh, that is this uh, take this two at the other side and uh, h2 is positive and h1 is negative over here when it comes to the right side of equal sign then we can write under root of 2 into h1 minus h2 so this is uh, the simplified equation from this equation itself so when we further simplified the equation now here we have the velocity of air at the throat section that is the c2 value so now for the further equation assuming air to behave a ideal gas now we are going to assume air is to be behave a ideal gas so we know when we consider the ideal gas that time you have to consider the specific heat at constant pressure as well as the temperature point so we can uh, replace that h1 is nothing but enthalpy and enthalpy is nothing but specific heat at constant pressure multiplied by temperature t1 that is for section 11 and similarly for section 22 h2 is equal to specific heat at constant pressure cp stands for specific heat at constant pressure into temperature that is t2 so replace h1 by cp t1 and h2 by cp t2 over here so again uh, further simplification we can uh, take cp as a common so the further equation uh, should uh, c2 is equal to under root of 2 cp into bracket t1 minus t2 so again uh, as uh, the further simplification is again possible if you want to take t1 as a common so for the further arrangement or the further adjustment we want to take t1 as a common from this equation so there is a need to do some uh, arrangement in this equation uh, in this particular equation so what the arrangement we are doing if we want to get uh, t1 as a common then what we can do we can multiply and divided by t1 to the t2 okay so please concentrate on my statement we are multiply by t1 and divided by t1 to this particular t2 and that's why we can get t1 as a common from this equation so what is remaining in this bracket 1 minus t2 divided by t1 because this numerator term t1 will come out as a common from this equation and what is remaining t2 by t1 and give equation number one okay so need is what uh, why we have taken out t1 as a common we will understand in the further equation part so here we have c2 is equal to under root of 2 cp t1 and intentionally we have bring out this particular t1 as a common by making some arrangement in this above uh, equation and give equation number one okay so the further part of this derivation that is as the flow process from the inlet to the venturi can be considered isentropic so what we are going to consider 
द फ्लो प्रोसेस फ्रॉम इनलेट टू द वेंचुरी मीन्स सेक्शन वन वन इज द इनलेट सेक्शन ऑफ द एयर एंड सेक्शन टू टू इज अ वेंचुरी सेक्शन एंड ड्यूरिंग दैट फ्लो ऑफ द एयर प्रोसेस वी आर कंसिडरिंग इट कैन बी आइसेंट्रॉपिक वन सो ड्यूरिंग आइसेंट्रॉपिक प्रोसेस अगेन अकॉर्डिंग टू द थर्मोडोनामिक्स लॉ फॉर द आइसेंट्रॉपिक प्रोसेस वी हैव टू कंसिडर पी वन वी वन रेस टू गैमा दिस इज फॉर सेक्शन वन वन एंड पी टू वी टू रेस टू गैमा दिस इज फॉर सेक्शन टू टू सो नाउ वी कंबाइन टूगेदर द वी टू बाय वी वन रेस टू गैमा टर्म बिकॉज हियर इज ऑल्सो गैमा हियर इज ऑल्सो गैमा बोथ गैमा आर सेम सो वी कैन राइट वी टू बाय वी वन रेस टू गैमा द पावर इज सेम एंड इज इक्वल टू दिस पी वन Take down this P2 is over here, so we can write uh, simplified equation V2 by V1 raised to gamma is equal to P1 by P2. Similarly, if we can send this gamma at this right side of the equal to sign to the pressure, so here is the V2 by V1 raised to gamma. When it comes to the right side, then we can write P1 by P2 raised to 1 by gamma. So this is uh, according to the the rules of uh, the equation so like that we can write the equation so similarly we know the ideal gas equations we know p2 v2 by t2 is equal to p1 v1 by t1 this is the standard equation okay p1 v1 is equal to mr t1 this is the standard ideal gas equation and according to that equation we can write p2 v2 by t2 is equal to p1 v1 by t1 this is for section 22 and section One one. So even the more sections are there, section three, section four, like that we can write it is equal to p three v three by t three, p four v four by t four, like that. So here we are just considering two sections. That's why we can write p two v two by t two is equal to p one v one by t one. And this is from the standard equation that is p one v one is equal to m r t one or simply p v is equal to m r t. That is the standard universal gas constant equation. Okay, so. we can simplify the equation uh, take down the temperature terms uh, close to each other so we can write uh, take down this t2 at the right side and we can write t2 by t1 is equal to this uh, p2 and take down this uh, p1 term over here p2 by p1 into this v2 by v1 so p1 v1 take down over here and take down this t2 to the right side so we have the equation t2 by t1 is equal to p2 by p1 into v2 by v1 okay so if we want to write again so if you check over here we have v2 by v1 value with us because earlier we have already calculated v2 by v1 value so we can put the value of v2 by v1 over here so we can replace v2 by v1 to the value of v2 by v1 is equal to p1 by p2 raised to 1 by gamma so put this value in this equation and we can write so i am just again explaining this thing so the value is what we already calculated the value of v2 by v1 is equal to p1 by p2 raised to 1 by gamma so put this value in the equation of v2 by v1 so we can rewrite the equation p2 by p1 into p1 by p2 raised to 1 by gamma just put the value okay this p1 by p2 raised to 1 by gamma and we have put it to over here so similarly here is p2 by p1 and here is p1 by p2 so we have to match both the terms we have to take the same term to each other here is p2 by p1 raised to 1 uh, nothing is there that's why the power will be 1 and here is p1 by p2 uh, raised to 1 by gamma so when we replace this one to p1 by p2 that time this uh, power will be a negative one okay so the next one is what uh, p1 by p2 raised to minus 1 into in bracket gamma minus 1 uh, divided by gamma because the power is what here is uh, initially the power is plus 1 into 1 by gamma okay in this case uh, when we consider uh, this uh, p1 by p2 terms both will be in same way then that time this plus 1 become minus and because of uh, this one the cross multiplication will be there and we can uh, write the term p1 by p2 in the same way p1 by p2 raised to minus into bracket gamma minus 1 divided by gamma this uh, comes because of the cross multiplications okay cross multiplications of this particular power so we have the further equation t2 by t1 is equal to p1 by p2 because of this um, minus multiplied to this bracket 
this plus gamma become a minus gamma and minus 1 become minus minus plus so 1 minus gamma divided by gamma and this will be equation number 2 okay so hope you understood equation number 2 so if you see the equation number 2 here we got the equation for t2 by t1 so again here put equation number 2 in equation number 1 Okay, so here we have the value of T2 by T1 with us. So can we put the T2 by T1 in equation number 1? Yes, here we have T2 by T1 in equation number 1. So we got the value of T2 by T1 over here in equation number 2. So put the equation number 2 in equation number 1. Here is that equation number 1. So put the value of T2 by T1 in the equation number 1 and after that, we'll get the equation C2 is equal to under root of 2CPT1 in bracket 1 minus this T2 by T1 is now replaced by that value P1 by P2 raised to 1 minus gamma divided by gamma bracket close. And this whole term come in the under root side. Okay. So again, uh, the further simplification is uh, possible. Uh, C2 is equal to 2 Cp T1 1 minus this P2 by P1. Again, here is the P1 by P2. But for the further arrangement, we have to change this P1 by P2 to P2 by P1. So we can write P2 by P1 raised to gamma minus 1 by gamma. Because once we change this denominator term to numerator, then again, we can write the p2 by p1 and there is a change in the sign of the power so here is the minus gamma it will come to the positive gamma and the plus one will come to the minus one divided by gamma this happens because of changes in the numerator term to the denominator so please understand this change okay this is uh, for the further requirement that's why we have to make this particular change p1 by p2 raised to one minus gamma by gamma change to P2 by P1 raised to gamma minus 1 by gamma. And this comes as per uh, the standard uh, equation form and standard rule. So uh, the next step, uh, give this is nothing but equation number 3. Now, mass flow of air is a constant from inlet to venturi throat and is a given by. Okay, now uh, we are going to calculate the mass flow of air. As we already calculated the mass flow of air that is m sub xa in the earlier equation or earlier derivation of approximate analysis method. Here also we have to calculate. In that case, we have not considered the compressibility of air. That's why we have just considered that throat section. But here we are going to consider the compressibility of air. That's why we have to calculate the mass of air at the initial section also. That's why uh, we know the mass of air formula area into velocity into density. So for section 1, 1, its uh, formula is what? A1 into C1 into density of air. So we again know density is nothing but 1 divided by specific volume. 1 by V, this small v stands for the specific volume. This is the standard formula of the density. 1 by V means this 1 by specific volume is nothing but called as a density. So in this case, we have to write the equation in the form of specific volume. So rewrite the equation, mass of air is equal to A1 into C1. Uh, instead of rho A, here we can write 1 by V for section 1, 1, that is 1 by V1 and Similarly, when we apply this uh, particular formula for section 2, 2, uh, we can write A1 C1 by small v1 is equal to A2 C2 by V2. So, this is about uh, for the both sections, section 1, 1 and section 2, 2 of the carburetor and give equation number 4. Here is that particular mass of air which is again present over here. So, this should uh, equation number 4. So, uh, after the further simplification, v1 and v2 small v1 and v2 are the specific volume at section 1 1 and section 2 2 respectively as i discussed earlier so again uh, we have to use the standard formulas p1 v1 raised to gamma is equal to p2 v2 raised to gamma we know this relation so again according to this relation uh, we can write this v2 by v1 is equal to p1 by p2 raised to 1 by gamma as we already discussed all these things again uh, there is a use of this particular standard equation form so again uh, we can write p1 by p2 raised to 1 by gamma again uh, if you want to get the p2 to numerator and uh, p1 to the denominator then you have to write p2 by p1 raised to change in the sign of the power uh, minus 1 by 
gamma. So we got the equation V2 by V1 raised to gamma is equal to this uh, P2 by P1 raised to uh, minus 1 by gamma. Okay, so uh, we have just written over here this particular term. Uh, if we require this term, then we can use this form of P2 by P1 raised to uh, minus 1 by gamma. So initially, again, uh, the same uh, equation we have written over here, the V2 by V1 raised to gamma is equal to P1 by P2 raised to gamma by gamma. Okay, so similarly, in this uh, case, what happened v2 by v1 raised to gamma is equal to p1 by p2 raised to gamma by gamma itself so uh, finally we can write the equation v2 is equal to uh, take down this v1 term over here v1 into p1 by p2 raised to 1 by gamma okay so we can write the equation v2 is equal to uh, small v1 into p1 by p2 raised to 1 by gamma okay so uh, i think you understood the term because uh, here is uh, not the gamma term v2 by v1 is uh, not gamma which is present over here so forcefully we have taken gamma over here also and forcefully we have considered gamma over here also okay so both side we have taken gamma is here also and gamma is here also and this is required for the further simplification okay so please don't consider this equation right now okay please concentrate what i am telling don't consider the equation right now if it is required furtherly then we can use okay initially what we are doing v2 by v1 is equal to p1 by p2 raised to 1 by gamma so take down the gamma term to the left side as well as the gamma term to the right side so if you write gamma into 1 that is a gamma by gamma and here also gamma by gamma so this gamma and this gamma can be cancelled to each other so we can write it the meaning is same there is no change in the meaning of this one so we can write this equation in this form also so similarly uh, what will happen because of this uh, arrangement v2 is equal to take down this v1 to the right side v1 into p1 by p2 raised to 1 by gamma okay so we can write uh, like this one this gamma gamma will get cancer and finally we can write this one even though if you not consider this uh, gamma and this gamma uh, over here also you can directly write this equation in this form v2 is equal to v1 uh, into p1 by by 2 raised to 1 by gamma so why we have taken this uh, you can understand in the further equation okay so directly you can write this equation from uh, this equation itself okay so that's why i'm just, just showing this arrow uh, to understand clearly so similarly when we talk further also we know that the ideal gas constant or universal gas constant equation p1 v1 is equal to mrt1 we know this equation and we already use this equation in this uh, derivation part so we can write v1 is equal to this rt1 divided by p1 let us consider this m is uh, nothing but the unit mass and its standard value is suppose 1 that's why we can consider it as a 1 so uh, what is remaining v1 is equal to rt1 divided by p1 so similarly in this case we have already calculated the value of v2 which is equal to v1 into p1 by p2 raised to 1 by gamma okay so similarly if you want to put the value of v1 can we put yes definitely we can put because here is a v1 so if you want to write the v1 v1 is equal to take down this p1 by p2 raised to 1 by gamma over here so v1 is nothing but v2 divided by this p1 by p2 raised to 1 by gamma so put the value of v1 in this equation so we have the equation of v1 put the value of v1 is v2 divided by p1 by p2 raised to 1 by gamma i am here just put it the value of v1 and after uh, simplifying that we got v2 is equal to rt1 by p1 now here is that particular p1 by p2 raised to 1 by gamma when we take it to the right side then it will be multiplied one okay so rt1 by p1 as it is only the value of v1 which uh, we taken from this equation and that is v2 divided by p1 by p2 raised to gamma put that value over here and take down that uh, 
denominator term to the right side of the equal to sign and we have the equation number 5 okay i think uh, you understood this equation number 5 itself so something uh, long derivation is there uh, but again it is very much simple uh, just concentrate whatever i am telling that is again very simple to understand so now after equation number 5 now substitute the value of c2 and v2 in equation number 4 so right now we have the values of v2 with us as well as we have already calculated the value of c2 so this is the value of c2 and uh, this is the value of the v2 so both values we have so put these two values in equation number 4 where is equation number 4 here is that particular equation number 4 mass of air is equal to a1 c1 divided by v1 or it is equal to a2 c2 divided by v2 so we have just calculated the value of c2 and value of v2 so we can further put the value of mass of air is equal to a2 c2 divided by v2 and put the values of c2 and v2 in the equation number 4 this is that equation number 4 and we can rewrite the equation mass of air is equal to a2 under root of 2 cp t1 in bracket 1 minus p2 by p1 gamma minus 1 by gamma bracket close and divided by the value of v2 which we calculated rt1 by p1 in bracket p1 by p2 raised to 1 by gamma so this is the equation of mass of air now we are going to further simplify this particular equation of mass of air so take down this a2 term as it is divided by this r term right separately then uh, this t1 write separately then again uh, take down this p1 term it is now denominator of rt1 by p1 now we can write as per the standard uh, rules we can take it to the numerator side and we can directly write uh, this term p1 as it is p1 so we can write this a2 p1 this uh, we have taken this p1 to the term at this side so a2 p1 divided by rt1 as it is so again here is p1 by p2 now when it comes to the uh, numerator side that time there will be a changes in this so we can write p2 by p1 the power is as it is 1 by gamma so the remaining term is 2 cp t1 in bracket uh, the remaining term as it is so inside the under root okay so understood the these things uh, this p1 comes to the numerator side and this p1 by p2 when it comes to the numerator side that time you have to write p2 by p1 raised to 1 by gamma according to the standard rules and laws okay so uh, here we got the simplified equation again uh, after the next equation the further simplification is again possible a2 p1 rt1 as it is so multiply this p2 by p1 raised to 1 by gamma term to this under root term okay so we can take this p2 by p1 raised to 1 by gamma term into the under root once it will come into the under root then 1 by gamma will change to the 2 by gamma okay this is outside of under root when it comes in the under root that time 1 by gamma changes to 2 by gamma 2 cpt1 as it is 2 p2 by p1 1 by gamma multiply to this one so it becomes p2 by p1 raised to 2 by gamma and similarly p2 by p1 1 by gamma multiplied to this particular term then the term become p2 by p1 because here is also p2 by p1 here is also p2 by p1 here is one gamma minus one uh, by gamma is already present and once it will come inside this under root term and multiply it uh, to this so that term uh, one by gamma becomes two by gamma so plus two by gamma so this powers base is again same so uh, in the further equation you can write uh, this base is same and uh, 2 minus 1 that is uh, plus 1 so gamma plus 1 by gamma so the further simplified equation is what so this is the further simplified equation a 2 p1 by rt1 as it is 2 cp2 1 as it is and this term is also as it is only there is a simplification for the power and we can write the next equation so similarly after further simplification what is uh, the further simplification now we have take this t1 inside the under root side once again so uh, outside the under root here is the t1 once it will come inside the under root sign that will come uh, t1 square that become t1 square so the next equation is what a2 p1 by rt1 
under root of whole equation in under root that is 2 cp t1 divided by t1 square now this t1 to t1 square and this term is as it is we have written over here so similarly for the further simplification finally we can write a2 p1 by r under root of 2 cp this 1 t1 and this 1 t1 will get cancelled that's why we have taken this t1 inside this uh, under root sign so uh, 2 cp t1 in uh, bracket the remaining term as it is give equation number 6 okay so uh, you understood uh, how uh, we have got this particular equation number 6 okay and uh, you can consider or you can uh, you could uh, uh, understand why there is a need to uh, require some arrangement why we have taken this t1 inside okay so you can uh, now understood the reasons of it so finally the above equation gives the theoretical mass flow equation the actual mass flow is obtained by multiplying the coefficient of discharge of venturi okay so in the earlier equation of approximate analysis as we already considered the cda and cdf that is the coefficient of discharge of air and cdf that is the coefficient of discharge of fuel so uh, here if you see we have directly written the equation of mass of fuel so as we already discussed uh, before start of this particular derivation part there is a no need to calculate the mass flow of fuel because the compressibility of air affects on the mass of air okay that's why the mass of air equation will be changed and we have just calculated that mass of air equation so when we uh, want to write the equation in the form of mass of air to the mass of fuel that time we can directly take this mass of fuel equation from the earlier derivation part okay we have already calculated we have already discussed this mass of fuel part so this uh, mass of fuel equation we have taken it from the earlier derivation part of uh, by neglecting the effect of compressibility of air derivation or the approximate analysis method itself so again uh, put the value mass of air as it is over here mass of fuel as it is over here this is for coefficient of discharge of air and this is for coefficient of discharge of fuel so the simplified equation we have written uh, take it uh, t1 separately that's why the separate under root sign is given to the t1 so cp p2 by p1 raised to 2 by gamma minus p2 by p1 gamma plus 1 by gamma under root sign we have written over here and uh, the term for the fuel to under root of 2 rho f in bracket p1 minus p2 minus z into z into rho f uh, bracket close uh, this term is written over here so this is about the mass of uh, air to the mass of fuel equation in the case of exact analysis method so finally the approximate expression for mass flow of air if the pressure drop here uh, that is p1 minus p2 is uh, sufficiently small so in this case uh, what we can consider that is if the pressure drop is small or that is p1 minus p2 is very much small then this equation becomes mass of air is equal to a2 under root of 2 rho a p1 minus p2 so uh, here is the end of this particular derivation hope you understood uh, the things clearly okay so thank you so much uh, for watching this video and uh, you understood well uh, i think so thanks a lot